Today, we're going to talk about a topic that I see discussed hundreds of times a day. No exaggeration. It's also a topic that's not covered very well, whether that be in blogs, how-to guides, YouTube videos like this, or even from supplier websites. And that is all about naming your candles. The questions that I see asked all the time are things like, what should I name my candle? What should I rename fragrance XYZ? What would be a good alternative to the name ABC? Candle makers, both new and experienced, are always looking for ways to jazz up their candle names. They don't want to use the same name of the fragrance oils that they use in their candle making, and they also don't necessarily want to duplicate or use other common candle names on the market. Things like vanilla. So candle makers are always looking for a way to be more creative with their candle names. Again though, this isn't a topic that is covered in very much detail. But when it comes to questions like that, what should I name my candle or how should I rename this fragrance, is that there's both good and bad to that. The good is your head's in the right place. You're thinking about your business, you're thinking about marketing and advertising, you're thinking about branding, you're trying to stand out and be unique. So you're on the right track, you're thinking the right things. The bad is the names that you get are not necessarily going to be all that unique or if they are and they're really, really good names, most people are going to keep those to themselves. The best ideas are usually those that are kept secret. However, that being said, you saw the video thumbnail. If you have a fragrance oil named Duck Farts, I'll give you a freebie. Beak squeaks. <laughs> but if you don't like that, there's Misty Mallards, Quack Masks, and Feathered Flatulence. All right, I'll be honest, I didn't think 30 plus years of my life that I would ever spend several minutes talking about duck farts to thousands of people. Check that off my bucket list. And while we're looking at that bucket list, you'll also see another item, which is building a successful YouTube channel, helping other candle makers. So if you all feel like helping me with that bucket list item, feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and check out all the other videos on the channel. Hi everyone, my name is Wade Thomas. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn Candle Company. I also run this YouTube channel. As I mentioned, dedicated to helping other candle makers make candles, make melts, and also run a candle making business if you so choose. If you're interested in any content like that, I would encourage you to subscribe. Let's go ahead and get back to today's video at hand, which is all about renaming your fragrances and naming your candles. So we're gonna cover this topic in basically three chunks. First is what naming options and styles are there for you to use and have fun experimenting with. Number two, we're gonna talk about a little bit of the legal cautions that you should be aware of when you're naming your scents and candles. And third and finally, I'm gonna give you some examples from my business on how I name some of the candles in a particular line that I offer. And for those of you asking yourself, is there really a duck farts fragrance oil? Well, yes, there is. How do I know? because I have it. I also have butt naked, monkey farts, lick me all over, and Santa farts. And these aren't just sample bottles. These are entire bottles. Why? How could you not? As they say, go big or go home. Sometimes it's better to go home. All right, first things first. What are some of the options and styles for naming your candles? What are some potential naming conventions for you to use? There are five major categories of naming conventions that come to my mind or that I see out there in the market. That is descriptive, nostalgic, lifestyle, abstract or creative, and thematic. So we're gonna talk about each of those real quick and of course a few examples uh, to really kind of highlight the image here. And then you can kind of experiment with some of these names and see what might work best for your business. First, let's talk about descriptive. Now descriptive are the ones that really are just kind of describing the notes or the note pro profiles that are in the fragrance itself. For example, vanilla sandalwood or amber and musk or cinnamon apple. Those are basically just describing the notes, the, the, the top, middle, or base notes that are in the candle. The ones that generally jump out are the, and are the more dominant notes in the fragrance. This is kind of your simplistic, professional, modern approach. You see this really, really heavily used these days uh, by even some of the most notable candle companies. The next category is nostalgic. And I would say this is probably the most common overall. And this is things that just kind of describe a life situation, something that brings you back to your roots, something that reminds you of an event or a time in your life. For example, Christmas Eve, Grandma's Kitchen for a bakery scent, a walk in the woods or a walk in the park. Names like that. It's really just taking that aroma and trying to match it to a feeling or a time in your life, something that makes you think or feel something. Third, and it might sound related or the same, and that is the lifestyle category. But I don't mean lifestyle in a nostalgic way. It's lifestyle meaning more of phrases that have nothing to do with the fragrance itself. You're really just choosing common phrases to fit people's lifestyles, and then they can choose whatever scent goes in it, or you might offer specific scents. For example, a candle that just says, home sweet home. 
that really tells you nothing about the fragrance for the most part, and you can really make any fragrance you want. Another example is, I hate Monday. Or maybe a candle is sitting on the back of a toilet or on the sink in a bathroom, and it just says, put the seat down. <laughs> Things like that. You can use the sky is the limit with these names. They can be humorous, they can be fun, they can be motivational, whatever you want. And then, of course, you can match the scent to it if you'd like to, or let the customer choose the scent that they want. Maybe you offer that candle with that phrase and eight different fragrance options. That is also becoming more and more popular recently among both small and large companies. The fourth category is abstract and creative. Now, this is the one that's the least used because it's also the most difficult to name your candles. And these are names that are not conventional in any way whatsoever. In fact, sometimes they're not even dictionary words. They're words that you've created, they're mashups, or they're words that just describe something totally abstract that it really takes a lot of creativity and planning and thinking to come up with these names. It's not too hard on a few, but to try to do an entire candle line with these names is very difficult. There is one candle in, in one of my lines that comes to mind that fits into this category, and that is Aquaphoria. That is what I called it. It's really a duplication of that uh, men's popular clone, Aqua da, uh, better not finish that sentence because I like my channel, but I call it Aquaphoria, and it's just sort of a made up word. That's not a real word. Um, I really like it, so I kept it. That's kind of an example of one of those abstract or creative names. Again, they're not the easiest ones to come up with, but if you're done really well, it can make your candle line very unique. The last category or naming convention is a thematic one, and that is one that's based on the theme or niche of your candles. So for example, let's say you make candles all around sports or animals or yoga or gardening. You can have a collection of candles where the names all fit into that niche. They're all representing that niche or that hobby. A popular example that I can think of is, I can't remember the actual business name, uh, but they sell mythological candles. And so all their candles have that type of theme to them. Those of you that have very niche based specific uh, candle companies that are targeted at a certain type of customer, this is a really good option for you because it helps build that specific brand awareness and really targets your audience. So that's a little bit about the different naming conventions and styles for you to choose from. Um, there are others, just those are the categories that I mostly know about and ones that I have experimented with. But let's talk about uh, the, the ugly side of this for just a sec. And that is something no one really wants to think about or talk about, but it's important to know a couple key aspects of it. And that is the legal side of things, a few cautionary tips on how to approach your naming. The way to summarize this the best is just to simply avoid copyright names. The best way to do this is go to USPTO.gov. That is the United States Patent Trademark Office, I think. You can do a search and that will show you if that name is taken. Now, it does take a little bit of experience and learning how to use that site because just because you find a name that matches yours does not mean that you can't take it. It could be being used for something else. If someone's got a patent on a specific name, but that name is for uh, body wash, that doesn't mean you can't use it for candles. Or if it's the name of a paint color, doesn't mean you can't use it for the name of your candle. When you're searching, make sure you're looking to see if that name is used in your specific application. If it is, your best bet is to not use it and just avoid any and all risk and come up with something else. There's endless options out there. Avoiding this problem is the best way to stay out of trouble. Prevention is your best option. Now, I want to talk about a misconception. You'll see a lot of people asking, can they use the word type on the end? For example, Vanilla Woods type. Now, I don't know if Vanilla Woods is actually patented. I'm just, that's just an example that just literally came to my head. But many people think that if you're using a duplicated scent or a copyright it's sent that you could just put the word type on the end and that gets you out of all trouble. Unfortunately, adding the word type does not put you in the clear. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit in a minute because I know some of you are already thinking, well, I see type used all the time on fragrance oils, but they get away with it. But we'll talk about that here in just a sec. The short answer is putting the word type after a trademark name does not put you in the clear. So doing that isn't gonna help you at all, just rename the scent. However, it is okay to say compared to or like dot, dot, dot. You can say after you've chosen your own name that this fragrance is compared to something something by Victoria's Secret, for example. That is completely okay as long as your name is unique and you're not infringing on the patented or copyrighted name. So back to that question that some of you I know are asking yourself and that is why can suppliers use copyrighted or protected names on their fragrance oil bottles? For example, Vanilla Woods type, Love Spell type. The reason they can't is because those names are actually patented on the candle fragrance name. Bath and Body Works, 
Yankee Candle, all of those own the patent for the name on their candle product, not the name on the oil itself. So the suppliers can reuse whatever names they want for the, for the oil itself, and they'll usually put dupe or type on the end just to let you know that it is a duplication. But there is a difference between them naming the fragrance oil itself versus naming the candle. They can use it because they're naming the oil, you cannot use it because you're naming a candle, which is what's already protected. That name is already protected for the use in a candle name. Hopefully that makes sense. Simplest answer to this is avoid names that are copyright protected, come up with your own, use the website uspto.gov and that will help you kind of fine tune your results and your searches to make sure you find something that is suitable. As promised earlier in the video, I'm gonna give you some examples of how I name some of my candles. Now, this is from my main kind of signature line of candles. Many of you have seen them. It's the one with the black labels and kind of metallic looking uh, names on the front. And to give you a little bit of an explanation of why I went this route with my candle names. All of these names, I went with a theme of basically creating an address or a location, like a place you might go. Uh, that's kind of the theme I went with. So basically I took the name I wanted. Most of them are fairly basic names uh, because I wanted the customer to know what they're buying. And then I just turned them into, like I said, a location or an address, a space basically. So let me give you some examples that'll make more sense. And I'm gonna kind of reference a list here because I wrote several down to give you some examples. For example, Blue Spruce Bluff, Bonfire Bend, Butterfly Gardens, Cranapple Crossing, Cotton Creek, Harvest Moon Hill, Mum Farm Ridge, Orchid Springs, Praline Parkway, Seaside Cove, Spider Sized, <laughs> Spider Sized, Spiced Cider Mill, Sweet Tobacco Fields, Vanilla Bean Valley, and Whiskey Bottoms. So as you can see, those are all names that you'd maybe see for an event space or a location or even an address. In fact, on these labels, they even have a number in the beginning to really kind of give that address type feel. Uh, that really fit my theme I was going for for this particular candle line. Will I change it? Probably, that's how I roll. I like to experiment, mix things up, and eventually I'll probably change that, but I like it right now. Plus I've already have tens of thousands of labels, so we're gonna use them. Anyway, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, both uh, from an informative perspective and also maybe a little bit entertaining as well. I'd love for all of you to put in the comments below what your naming convention is. How do you like to name your candles? And if you feel like and are comfortable sharing, maybe even mention one of your favorite candle names from your own candle line. Lastly, just a reminder, please like this video, give it a thumbs up below. Don't forget to subscribe and also hit that bell icon. That will turn on notifications when I post new videos. Thanks for tuning in as always, and we will see you next time. Thank you.